Yes, I'm Albert Ho, and yes, my speech will save your life. Especially if you lead a, a placid lifestyle with no physical oh. exercise. And, and uh, I'm proud to be a new member, having just been inducted tonight. But unfortunately, some of you missed my icebreaker. Uh, and so I was a member of Queen's Park Toastmasters uh, four years ago, actually. And, uh, and uh, I was a member there for about six months, but unfortunately, I moved out of the area. Uh, professionally, in my day job, uh, I'm a registered nurse and I work at uh, Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre on a general medicine unit and an ICU step down. I recently got married and I live uh, just around the corner on Queen's Key West. One of the main reasons I wanted to join Toastmasters was to work on my leadership and my speaking skills. And I've been asked to speak to the media on a few times and I often make presentations in front of large groups. One memorable speech was uh, recently at Ryerson University's uh, School of Nursing Convocation. I had to speak in front of 1,500 guests. Uh, so, uh, for my topic for tonight, I want to share my passion for fitness training. I love learning how to take care of my body and believe that everyone can benefit from fitness training. In fact, even a small change can have a big impact on your lifestyle. Doing some physical exercise is better than doing none. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the three main components, which are exercise, diet, and rest. When we think of exercise, the first thing we think about is how can I get a six pack, right? <laughs> Some people are famous for their big muscles, such as uh, former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Everyone knows him. But for the average person like myself, uh, it's, not, it's not sustainable or practical to have big hockey muscles like Arnold. For me, my main goals are just to be fit and healthy. Uh, I've been a member of a local gym, Extreme Fitness, for two years, and I typically spend two to three hours a week going to the gym. Most experts say that you need to spend two, a minimum of two hours per week to maintain your uh, current level of fitness, and you need to spend more than five hours if you, need to, if you want to see more changes. And some of the things that I do at the gym include uh, weight training, cardiovascular exercise, and, and stretching. So you could, do, uh, you could work out alone at home, but I've found uh, it's better to actually do something called group fitness classes. So group fitness classes are simply a class where an instructor leads you through a certain set of exercises and it's typically a one hour class. So some of the benefits of going to group fitness training is that there's music playing, it's motivating, and the instructor will actually see you and actually can give you uh, pointers on your form. As well, there's other people in the class and they're all there for the same reasons as you. And if you do things as a group, you'll actually do more than if you're doing it alone. It also helps that the class is uh, co-ed, so it helps to see <laughs> the proper form for some of these exercises. <laughs> so after your workout, I'm sure you'll be starving, which bring, brings me to my second point of uh, diet. So when I say diet, I'm not uh, talking to those fad diets with acai berries and uh, low-carb diets where you're going to starve. I'm referring to uh, just sort of monitoring what to eat, right? I mean, I still eat uh, pizza and hamburgers like everyone else. But you should be thinking of your food in terms of the composition. So that's the, the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats in the food. So all foods can be categorized into these three components. And you should be monitoring how much of each is good for what your fitness goals are. So now that you're eating, you also have to make sure you're drinking enough water. And I mention water because most people actually don't drink enough water. So they, they say that you should be drinking an average of six to eight glasses per day. But how do you really know if you're drinking enough water? I'm going to tell you a, a dirty tip is that after you go to the washroom, look into the toilet. If, if, the, uh, if the urine's a bit dark, you're not drinking enough water. <laughs> it should be clear. So that, that's, that's a, uh, a tip that hopefully you remember. And it's also, water is also important because water actually makes up 50 to 65% of your body, and of your body weight, and it also makes up 70% of your, of your muscle size. So, by drinking more water, it's an essential nutrient that your body needs. So people actually often step on the uh, scale every day or every week to see uh, changes in their, in their body weight. But you're actually measuring more of the changes in your uh, water gain and loss. So I'm actually going to tell you another better way to uh, measure your body uh, composition, which is something called a, a body fat analysis. So this is just a special scale that measures uh, your body fat percentage. And the way it works is you step on it with your bare feet and it sends an electrical current up one leg and down the other leg. Trust me, it doesn't hurt, but it actually, the machine will actually spit out a percentage so that you can actually accurately track uh, any gains or losses in body fat percentage. And uh, for the average male, it should be uh, 10 to 20% body fat 
for adult women, 19 to 26%. So after your tough workout, I'm sure you probably want to take a nice long nap, which brings me to my third component of uh, getting proper rest. So the body needs to recover after a workout, and getting enough sleep is actually very important. Because when you sleep, that's when your body is actually recovering. And so experts say you need seven to nine hours of sleep every night. And that includes also going to, uh, going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. And yes, I try and keep this up on weekends actually, because it makes it easier to keep that schedule up during the week. Um, and experts also say that you should be uh, spacing out your muscle groups by 48 hours. So for example, if you work your biceps on Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday you need to take a rest, and then Wednesday you can work that same muscle group again. So on my rest days, I might do some yoga, or I also see a registered massage therapist. So in conclusion, I hope that I've shown how everyone can benefit from physical exercise. It doesn't cost anything to make some of these changes to your lifestyle. Anyone can spend between two to five hours per week doing some exercise. You should be thinking of your food in terms of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. But remember to drink enough water. Try and get between seven to nine hours of sleep every night, and consistently rest. Now that, you, uh, now that you've learned about the three main components, I hope that all of you take action today. You can save your life. Thank <laughs> you.